Foodie, hi everyone, this is Anna, the Keto Foodie. And if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering what in the world keto is, how it works, and what's this whole business with fat? Stick around, I'll explain it. Right, so what's keto anyway? All right, well quite simply, it's uh, keto, which is short for ketogenic, is a way of eating or a diet where you eat a small amount of carbs, a medium amount of protein, and a high amount of fat. Now it's that last bit that has us all fighting because we've been told for years that um, you need to do a low fat in order to be healthy, in order to be fit, and in order to lose weight. And keto is challenging that. Now, keto has been around for a long time, and in the 1920s and 30s, it was used um, to treat people with epilepsy. Um, then it was all uh, expanded to treat people with things like insulin resistance, metabolic issues, type 2 diabetes, um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even some forms of autism and some forms of cancer. Now, you don't have to believe me. In fact, I encourage you to go out there and do some research. So let your fingers do the tapping, read some of the medical research and summaries for yourself and just get a bit more informed, okay? But um, when it comes to keto, the theory, the thought process behind it is that we are so bombarded with high processed foods, with high carb foods, additives, preservatives, very starchy foods and sugars that our bodies can't actually process them correctly and our body tries its best but it is full of things that it doesn't even know what it is let alone how to actually process it so eventually our bodies start having issues and because the nutrients and everything doesn't really work in our body optimally the way it should then the body starts having issues and you start having issues. Things like chronic bloating, things like insulin resistance, um, maybe even some IBS. Um, so what happens here is the thought process is that keto is uh, going back to a more um, wholesome way of eating, a bit closer to the source, staying away from carbs, staying away from uh, starches and sugars, uh, also staying away from highly processed foods as much as possible and wherever possible going organic um, and hopefully that will help your body ease the symptoms um, of of your ailments and and help heal actually the body uh, from the inside out right so how does it work well when you eat your body takes carbs and it turns it into glucose for energy for your body. So what happens is when your glucose levels rise, then up comes insulin and it says, right, you guys go to the left, you guys go to the right, and insulin helps move the glucose uh, around the body and into the body so that it is burned for fuel. Now, the thing is, you only have a limited store for the glucose that you need for the energy for the day. When you've got too much and it doesn't fit into that room, then it gets stored in your body as fat. The way it, the body is thinking is, well, we'll get to that fat soon, because once you know, once we finish the carbs, then um, there won't be any more glucose coming around, and we'll have to use the fat in the back. The problem is, every day we bombard the body with carbs and starches and sugars, which fills that store right back up and puts more fat in the back. So you never get to what's behind there because you're always replenishing and overstocking every day. Now, um, once you have your glucose and the insulin coming in, when you've got when you're constantly overstocking and when you're constantly filling it and you've got so much fat stored in the back that um, glucose suddenly turns into a herd of cats and when insulin comes in and tries to get them to go where they need to go glucose is like no i'm staying right here it's sunny and insulin goes right i need more help i need backup and more insulin 
comes out because the glucose levels have not decreased because the body hasn't been able to process it correctly. So if your body can't process energy, no wonder people with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes always are so tired and have fatigue. Now, I have type 2 diabetes, I have hypothyroidism, and I have metabolic syndrome. You can imagine the relief in understanding, oh, that's the reason why, I'm always, why I was always so tired um, and always falling asleep and just not energy to do anything. Um, so there you go. So you have all that insulin and it just, and it just becomes a cycle because you have high glucose, insulin, glucose doesn't go anywhere, more insulin. And that actually will develop, develop and hurt the body. And you develop insulin resistance, you develop type 2 diabetes. Now, if your body can't find enough carbs to turn, to turn it into glucose and to burn it for fuel, it will turn to the next best thing, protein. And what it does is it takes protein and it turns it to glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis, where it takes uh, the amino acids in protein and your muscles, we'll talk about that in another video, and it turns it into glucose for your energy. So what happens there is glucose levels rise, insulin comes in, glucose is still a herd of cats, and more insulin comes in because it's just not doing what it's supposed to be doing, so more insulin comes in to force it where it needs to be. So it's a repeat. So that's why they say low carb, medium amount of protein. And this is the difference between this and Atkins because Atkins was high protein, but really it ended up doing the same thing as if you were eating a high amount of carbs in a way because you were eating so much protein that it was filling up your glucose stores the same way that carbs were. And in a way, you were kind of losing your muscle tone if you weren't careful. Now, if your body can't find carbs and your body can't find enough protein, it will eventually turn to the fat that you put into it or have stored in your body. So what it does is uh, it uses the glucose from the little bit of carbs and the medium amount of protein and it uses specifically for the organs in your body that can only run with glucose, like your liver. Now, interestingly enough, your liver is the whole star of the show when it comes to keto because the liver is what puts you into ketosis by producing ketones. So when you don't have enough carbs and you don't have enough protein, then your body goes, hey, fat, you're up. And the fat cells in your body and the ones that are stored in the back are like, yes! Showtime, woohoo, look at me, look at me, finally being used, I've been waiting forever. And um, your body then uh, starts using the fat and taking the fat that you're storing in your body and that you're ingesting, and it, t it the liver takes it and turns it um, into energy through a process called ketosis. Now, with this process, um, it develops ketones and um, ketones are actually measurable. Um, and there's two ways, well, there's three ways to do it. Uh, you can uh, measure the excess ketones that you're expelling from your body through your urine. And that's the whole business with ketone sticks or pee sticks, um, where uh, you take a stick and you hold it in, into the urine stream for a few seconds and it will measure the amount of ketones that your body is expelling because it doesn't actually need it. Um, and then it turns either pink or purple or very dark purple. Now, the great thing about ketone sticks is they're cheap. And if you're just starting out, that's, I think, the easiest and cheapest way to go um, because you can get a, a bottle of about 100 uh, for less than uh, 10 pounds. I'm in the UK, so I'm using pounds. Um, so. The thing with that is that eventually, after a f maybe about a month, three weeks to a month, they're not really reliable because your body will have gotten very efficient with using your ketones. So while you might be heavily in ketosis, the ketones that are being measured 
that are coming out because they're not being used will decrease. So it kind of looks like you're coming out of ketosis, but actually, no, you're fine. Um, so it's not really reliable. But the other things that you have is you have ketone meters. So like glucose meters where diabetics will, you know, do the pinprick and measure their blood. It's the same process and it will measure your ketones. And those measure your ketones at that point in time that are in your blood. The other thing that will measure accurately um, as far as it will measure what your ketones are uh, at that point in time is a breathalyzer. Um, specifically for uh, to measure your ketones. Now, when it comes to the ketone meters and the breathalyzer, boy, they can be expensive. Now, you don't have to actually measure your ketones if you're following um, keto uh, uh, and you're okay with not measuring because you know that you're working the, the, the way of eating, then don't measure. But for those of us who are a bit OCD like me um, and who need to know or who just want to know, um, these are ways that you can measure. So the more expensive ones, you're talking about, you're basically spending about a pound every single time you test. So you can use them a bit more sparingly. Right, so that's how it works. Now, what's this business with fat? Well, does it mean that you can go and eat all the burgers you want and just have a whole bunch of fat. Actually, no. Um, keto doesn't look like you can just go on a junk food diet. Uh, in fact, what they're saying is the whole point to, to the fats are healthy fats. So things are natural fats. Uh, things like avocados, nuts, avocado oil, coconut oil, um, olives, olive oil, natural fats like butter, Ghee, which is clarified butter, lard, goose fat, um, natural uh, fats that are found uh, in nature that haven't been processed. So actually things like canola oil, vegetable oil, rapeseed oil are actually no-nos on the plan because you can't just press uh, a fruit or something out to get the oil. They have to actually be processed. So for canola oil or vegetable oil, a whole bunch of oils need to be processed in order to get that oil. Avocados, you just press them. Coconuts, you just press them. Olives, you just press them so it's natural. Um, so you're not eating a whole bunch of, you know, of, 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 you know, any kind of fat that you can find. Remember, we're trying to stay away from highly processed foods as much as possible. Um, so you really want to up your healthy fats, which help your good cholesterol um, increase, which helps your body do what it needs to do. And when all of that works, when you have low carb, medium protein, high fats, the fats are going around and going right body, I got you. When your meals are low in carbs and medium and protein, your glucose levels are not going up, so the insulin doesn't shoot up and your blood um, sugars don't go on this roller coaster ride. When you've got low carb and medium protein, then your glucose levels sort of just kind of stay right there. And that really, really helps, and especially if you've got type 2 diabetes, and it helps you to um, control your blood sugars and stay. Um, much more healthier, feeling better in general, um, reducing bloating, reducing issues perhaps um, with, um, you know, IBS, with bowel movements, um, and, and getting you a bit more uh, regular for some people. Um, and, and, and all of it just helps to work, to, your body to work much better, much closer to how it was designed to work to begin with. And the happy, happy side effect to all of that is that you can lose weight. Right, so that's what keto is, that's how it works. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you would like uh, to show me some love, then perhaps click the thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified as to when I put another video up, then please do click the subscribe button, and ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time. I hope to have you back with me um, next time, but until then, 
I say foodie bye. Foodie bye.